welcome to this fourth Ask Your Hotel Techie video. I'm Alicia from Hotel Spider and I'm here to share our know-how about the hotel technology with you in video format. Feel free to ask your own questions, let me know what you think, where you agree and disagree and let's have a discussion. Today I want to take a deep dive into a very technical topic, I want to take a deep dive into the length of stay restriction in the online world. Over the past few weeks, we've had the great fortune to onboard a bunch of new hotels with a new PMS partner. Due to the nature of these properties, but also the type of integration we have with this partner, we had a lot of discussions and also explanations in and around lengths of stay restrictions with these hotels. So that's what has inspired me and that's why I've picked this topic. Minimum lengths of stay is a restriction or a booking rule that limits how your guest can reserve your hotel. The guest goes online and enters his query and any system will compare his request with the restrictions you have defined to see if the booking is possible or not. The minimum length of stay is the least amount of nights that the guest has to come to your property at any given period. The discussion really comes up as there are two distinct ways on how to interpret the length of stay restrictions. The first one is min loss. The min loss is looking purely at the arrival date of the guest. And the second one is the forward min stay. This parameter looks at the entirety of the stay of the guests. And the big dilemma is that a lot of systems online use one of these parameters, but they all call them length of stay restriction. Let's make a specific example to illustrate the difference. Let's say it's holiday season, you're a mountain hotel, and over the peak days, you wanna restrict your guests, you wanna limit the length of stay to four. So you go into your systems, you define a minimum length of stay of four for the 24th of December. However, the period before, including the 23rd of December, there's a bit less demand, so you will keep the restriction at two. Let's assume the guest wants to stay with you for three nights with an arrival date of the 23rd of December. He goes online, he goes to your website or to an OTA and he tips, types in his request. Any system will then compare the restrictions that you have defined with the request of the customer. If the system uses the min loss, it will only look at the arrival date. So in this scenario, the customer is looking for three nights. The restriction on the 23rd is two. So the system will allow the reservation and the guest can book the room. A system working with the parameter forward min stay, however, will look at the entirety of his stay. So it will compare the values of the 23rd, the 24th, and the 25th with your restriction against his search. In this scenario, as you have defined for the 24th, a minimum length of stay of four, the system will deny the request as his three nights that he's looking for are smaller than the four you have defined. So you have exactly the same data, the same restrictions you have defined, you have exactly the same request the customer sends, in one scenario, the system will let him book. In the other scenario, it will not let him book. And that's the basic dilemma. That's the basic concept of it. When talking about automation and integration, we come back to the same basic dilemma we've talked about before. The whole industry calls the parameter length of stay restriction, but every system interprets it differently. You have some platforms that use either or, some work with min loss, some work with forward min stay, other platforms such as Expedia can work with both, but you have to define for your property what you want to use. And then players like Booking.com allow you defi to define both values at any given day. I hope the video today was not too technical and that I was able to show you the difference in how to interpret the length of stay restriction. If you are actively using the length of stay restriction, I really do recommend going back to your providers and looking at the different platforms to see how they interpret it. Let me know what you think. Let me know what other topics are interesting to you. What else we can look at. You can like, share and subscribe to this video. This is Ask Your Hotel Techie. Thank you very much for your attention. 
and stay tuned for the next video.